Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Harvest Celebration Church. It's great to have you with us. Hope you've been having a great time celebrating Christmas so far this year. Let's open with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your help in our lives. We thank you for your great goodness and kindness. And we thank you for the fact that you came, died for us, and you live again. You came as that little baby to give us life, and we thank you for that great life that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. I uh, want to remind you of tithes and offerings. Uh, you can give them, you can send them to Harvest Celebration Church, Post Office Box 670, Davenport, Washington, 99122. Um, remind you also of Wednesday evenings, 7 o'clock, we're on Facebook Live. Sunday mornings, we're on at 1045 on YouTube and on Facebook Live. We're also later on Right Now Media. We still have the clothes in the basement. If you know anybody that needs Christmas presents or something, you can get it. There's a lot of clothes down there. And we are planning to have church together Sunday morning, December 20th. No, no matter what, I want to encourage you to come. Bring your favorite Christmas item to share with everybody. Tell us why it is your favorite Christmas item, and I'll be letting you know more on that morning, but bring your favorite Christmas decoration, maybe the best gift you ever got, or something like that. Bring it and be ready to share. And uh, we are here at Sharing Hope through serving Jesus by serving others. We do that because our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus from Philippians 2.5. We can do that, because Romans 8, 11 says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens us. I remind you of verses from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, and uh, some other things. I also remind you that we do everything we do, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. I want to encourage you to stand wherever you are and join the worship team this morning as they uh, sing about the joy of Jesus and who he is today. Better tap your toe or clap or something for this.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. <clears throat> but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time for to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Well, this morning I want to talk to you about uh, unexpected things. You know, there's a lot of unexpected things that happen in our lives. Unexpected, uh, well, the with weather forecasting now, snowstorms are not so commonly unexpected or so often unexpected. Um, the pandemic was pretty much unexpected. Power outages uh, come at the most inconvenient times. A breakdown on your car or truck or something, or a gift. I remember, um, and I've shared before that I will never live down the phrase, another dumb old shirt, because I got this package you know, those boxes that are about that thick, about two inches thick, about this long, about 16 or 18 inches long, about 12 inches wide, you know it's going to be a shirt, right? Well, that's what I thought. But the unexpected thing that happened was when I opened the package, it was the toy that I had wanted. But before I opened it up, I was like, oh, another dumb old shirt. So it was unexpected that that happened. And there's so many unexpected things that happened surrounding the birth of Jesus. <laughs> Have you ever heard anyone exclaim, I found it in the last place I looked. I, I want to say to them, uh, well, I hope so, because if you kept on looking after you found it, I would start to wonder about you. Well, a, a week or so ago, I lost... Uh, I lost Joey, the, the little doll that I've had since I was a little boy that kind of has become Jesus in all of our 
Christmas scenes over the year, over the years, and um, I looked everywhere for Joey. I looked high and low and in between, and I looked in places that I didn't, I absolutely did not expect to find him. And then finally, I went and looked someplace where I absolutely did not expect to find him, and there he was. Where do you look for Jesus? Where do people look for Jesus? I don't know. We were driving across the state today, and I've been looking for Jesus all the way. And I have not seen Jesus yet. Squirrel, um, what happened? Oh, well... <laughs> I'm back, but back in a different place. And uh, where was I? Oh yeah, looking for Jesus. We've been driving across the state looking for Jesus everywhere we've been. We even pulled off the freeway a couple of times and looked for Jesus. And we drove through Clee Ellum and couldn't find Jesus. And that's supposed to be Christmas town. We saw everything to do with Christmas in Clee Ellum, except Jesus. Maybe we didn't look in the right place. Um, and that's kind of what this whole message is about, looking in the right places, wrong places, different places. Where will we find Jesus? I really, I really believe that the world is looking for Jesus to fill the vacuum in their hearts. Most people are looking in the wrong places because they just don't have uh, any want to tell them where the right place is. So they're looking to other people, they're looking to drugs, they're looking to alcohol, and so many other things that just end up causing them problems in their lives. So anyway, how does that, how does a family, I read those verses to you, that was probably unexpected too, just starting out right away in Luke chapter two without any introduction or anything, and uh, we read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through about 21. And uh, my question uh, is, how does a family from Nazareth have a baby in Jerusalem? Well, it comes down to a very ungodly king, Caesar, chooses to decide to take a census, make everybody register so he can tax them all. Oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Or should I say, surprise, surprise, surprise. Gomer Pyle, for those of you that might know that. But uh, so he sends out this government edict to send everyone to their hometown or their town of lineage. So Joseph and Mary end up going to Bethlehem. And that's how a family from Nazareth has a baby in Bethlehem. What an amazing thing. When, and when you think about it, and, and here's the other thing, unexpected, okay? So the people, the Jewish people, get this as we're looking at this whole thing. The Jewish people, the Jewish priests, the Jewish rabbis, all of these people have been teaching their people to look for Jesus, to look for the Messiah. They've been looking for the Messiah for generations and generations and generations and they've been looking for this messiah who would fulfill all these prophecies one of those prophecies was that he would be out of from nazareth but born in bethlehem so jesus is out of nazareth and born in bethlehem what a surprise what an unexpected thing and that's how it happened so where should a king be born well that's an interesting question usually kings are born in a palace somewhere uh, are in the very best room in the hospital. They're probably, things are set aside for this new king, but this king, his first crib is a manger. He's born in a stable, not in the best hospital around, not in the best, not in the nicest palace of the time. And <laughs> amazingly, the wise men were looking for, them, for him and they followed this star for two years. And so they were expecting to find a king born. They, they came to Herod in Jerusalem and said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? And Herod is like, 
Um, there hasn't been a baby born in this kingdom not, not to be a king for a long time. And so he starts quizzing them and they start asking other questions and find out that actually the baby was born in Bethlehem. And so they leave Jerusalem and go to Bethlehem after searching for two years. Have we been searching that hard for Jesus? I think we, we have, and I, I hope you are, and I hope you keep doing it. So where do we send the birth announcements? Well, the birth announcements for the king would go to the entire kingdom, to everybody, absolutely everybody in the kingdom. There would be leaflets, put down, there would be messages put out on Facebook and Instagram and all of the other cool social media things of the day. There would be news going out over all of the news stations that there was a new baby born and it would be shouted out around the world. But interestingly enough, God does it different and he sends his birth announcement through some angels to some shepherds that are standing out on the hillside. And, uh, <clears throat> and let's these shepherds know that a baby has been born. And so interestingly enough, that, that is another unexpected thing. Who are the first visitors to go see this new baby king? Well, it's shepherds. It's not those wise men. They were there, they weren't there for a long, long time. It's not other people, it's not all the people in the country, it's shepherds that are his first visitors. So many unexpected things surrounding the birth of Jesus, surrounding where he is. Who were the first people to, uh, to tell anybody about it besides the angels? Well, the first people to tell anybody else were shepherds. They were the ones, they said, let's go and see this thing that has happened, and then they went, it says they went and told everything. So what home would a king be raised in? What home would he live in? What home would he grow up in? Well, the expected place would be a palace. But the question that was asked about Jesus is, isn't this the carpenter's son? When you read some of the other places in in all of the Gospels, they, they were saying, this is the carpenter's son who is claiming to be the son of God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He didn't grow up. There was nothing expected, it seems like, in Jesus' life. Well, who did, who did he come for? Who did Jesus, this king, come to serve? He, you know, you would think that Jesus would come, that a new king would come and be there and he would hobnob with all of the richest, the wealthiest, and all of the special people, all of what would be considered the best people, the most elite crowd. But no, Jesus came for all of us sinners. He came for us. He came for you and me. He came for regular people and that's why he was born in a, in a irregular place so that we could relate to him as being someone who could relate to us and who is supposed to tell about him now well it's not the news media it's not other it's obviously not the news media it's not the politicians it's not the kings and queens of the earth it's not all of the people that you would think are special people it's us. We're the ones that are supposed to tell other people about Jesus. So as we close the service today and finish up, I just want to encourage you to think about the fact that we need to be looking for Jesus in unexpected places. In fact, sometimes you need to be that unexpected source of Jesus in lives of people around you. You need to be the place where Jesus shows up in that unexpected moment in someone's life. We're going to have the worship team come back and they're going to sing one more song. And as they're singing, is he worthy? You need to be considering, yes, he is worthy. He is worthy for me to tell the entire world about him. 
He's worthy for me to be the unexpected source of the good news of Jesus Christ.
So yes, he is worthy. He's worthy to be looked for. And I wanna encourage you to consider where you've been looking for Jesus. If you haven't been looking for Jesus, you need to look for him. If you uh, are looking for Jesus this Christmas season, find him. <laughs> find him in the unexpected places, find him in the expected places, but you can find him. If you've never found Jesus, you can find him by just saying, Jesus, I need you and he will come to you. He promises over and over to be there. In fact, that is his most common promise. His name was Emmanuel, God with us. That's why he came to be God with us. He wants to be with you, so he has made himself easy to find. He has done everything there is for you to find him, and all you need to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, be king of my heart. And today, I want you to know he is worthy of being king and Lord of your life. He is worthy to be searched for. He is worthy to be found. Find Jesus today by asking him into your heart and life. Ask him to forgive your sins and cleanse you. All you have to do is say, Jesus, please forgive me, cleanse me, and, and he will do it. Be my friend, be with me, in Jesus' name, amen. That's it, that's all you have to do. Lord Jesus, we ask that you come into people's lives today, that people find you and find you easy to find. We ask for your help, your guidance in people's lives. Lead us, guide us, direct us through this week and help us to be searching for you and looking for people who are searching for you and help us help them find you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as we go from this place and into the world right now, I want to encourage you to preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, because freely you have received, so freely give. And remember, you don't have to be anybody special like that song. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since he rescued me, he gave my heart a song. And I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Be that unexpected source of Jesus in people's lives.